Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Disney. We're going to give you another daily dose of dismal Disney. Uh, well, Bob Iger just keeps the gift that keeps on giving. Oh, he keeps stepping in it. Yeah, Bob Iger's making the rounds now. He's gloating. Uh, we got this article from The Hollywood Reporter. Bob Iger on woke Disney criticism. A lot of people don't even understand what that really means. We have that article. We have also Bob Iger's insisting that he wasn't putting himself at the forefront of everything. He was defending the company for the proxy battle, which is another load of horse manure. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. We, we will uh, talk about how they're trying to run defense now because it was very curious. We, we mentioned this in our video yesterday that most of the shareholder calls weren't really about the company itself so much as it was the company getting involved in politics. That's a very different tone from where what shareholders had before. And I want to I want to mention, you know, to I don't think we did put it put it in the video flat yesterday, but I went back and looked. Bob Iger was saying about, oh, when we heard about Epic Universe 10 years ago. Yeah. Did I say it in the video? I don't think I did. Um, I don't remember. We talk a lot of things. And I just thought it was funny because I was like, but when you look at the dates, these things were greenlit. Like when like Pandora was greenlit and these different places, it's 2024 minus 10s, 2014. And these were all before 2014. Toy Story Land, all of it was greenlit before 2014. So, yeah. yeah. No. And no one believes that everybody's mocking him for that because they all think it's a load of crap. But anyway. So let's talk about Bob Iger's load of crap. Uh, and another load of crap is their stock price. Today yeah, it's not, going down again. Good. It's still going down. We'll talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, you get woohoo if you do. Woohoo! Now, Disney's stock price started dropping almost immediately after the vote yesterday. Oh, it yeah, it was... Pretty much, it was starting to drop honestly before the shareholder cars call started. But as soon as they said for sure, yeah, it was gonna go. It just pfft. you could see the night before because apparently it was leaked that uh, Disney probably had it. Yeah, then as soon as they said that, it started to go yeah, down. Yeah, and uh, so you know, shareholders know there's not going to be any change at Disney anytime soon. It's more of the same. We're going to talk about that in another video. That immediately they start making movie announcements. They're just like, "Yep, it's the exact same thing you would have expected." I think I think they're going to start announcing projects that are going to take years to to develop. Um. We were talking about that today. Like after the call yesterday and the stock started going down, all of a sudden today, Disney shows their animatronics for Tiana's Bio Adventure. All of a sudden today. Which oh, look good. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, they look good. Yeah, they don't look bad at all. Yeah. Uh, Mama Odie looks great. Yeah. Then they also showed that all of a sudden, remember that Beyond Thunder Mountain that we never heard anything else about? Yes. Oh, well, now there's permits, guys, that they're going to file. For the wa to work on water stuff behind there. And according to Scott Gustin, who was somehow with all these other people at Imagineering, got to talk to the Imagineers, they all told him a week ago they were doing this, but he didn't say anything about it till today, which was the day after the earnings call. My money oh, is the fact that there was also something else. They also, I guess, the new Encanto and, the, and all that they're, to they're doing in the Indiana Jones, they have paper models or crappy models they're showing pictures of too. I, my money is on if they thought they were going to lose the proxy battle, they were going to drop the announcement ahead of the meeting. Yes. But since they knew they were going to win the proxy battle, they just told everybody to hold off till today when the stock started dropping. Oh, the stock's dropping. Quick, release, you know, that we're going to work on the stuff we promise, we swear. Yeah, I think that's it. I think this was basically a card they were going to play. This was, uh, you know, kind of their their Trump card. Can I say that? Am I allowed to say that? Their Trump card. Uh, they were going to play that card if they thought the votes weren't there. It'd be like, look, guys, we're actually doing all this stuff. So you need to keep the board intact so we can see all this stuff through, even though there's no possible way any of this stuff is going to be done within the next year. Oh, it's going to take at least five years. At oh. least. Oh, Disney? No. Five years for one coaster. Uh, yeah, I know. I mean, it's ridiculous. But you know, but they knew, guys. They knew. I think they were throwing this crap together because they knew Epic Universe was coming with these blue skies. But it's all blue sky. Nothing's been officially announced except for the um, Indiana Jones and the and the Encanto stuff. Yeah, this is so weird though because um, this whole Beyond Thunder Mountain thing. One, that's looks like a pretty large. I mean, we're talking like bigger than New Fantasyland. Where are they going to put it? There's an area back there, but not for this much. But they well, they took Encanto and they put it in the Animal Kingdom. So what I think they're going to do is they're going to triple down the Disney villains area yeah. because that's what people are really excited about. And they're going to do like a Disney villains land because they already moved in Canto to animal kingdom. 
They have Dark Universe coming and Epic Universe. Yes. And Disney villains are incredibly popular. And every time they've added them to nighttime events or had Villains Night sell out super fast, I 100% believe they're going to focus on Disney villains. We had talked about like 10 years ago. Oh, more than that, actually. There, maybe it was 12 it's, years. It's, it's been a long time. There was, a, there was a rumor going around that Disney was looking at doing a fifth gate another park and it was going to be Disney villains themed. And that actually would have been pretty cool, but I can see them doing like a, a budget cut version of it. Magic kingdom. Actually, I could see them taking Chernabog and putting them on the other side of thunder mountain, like facing the villain land. Well, they have them. And the, if you look at the piece of art, you can see the yeah, silhouette yeah. back there. Yeah. Just move him to the top of it, but on the other side. Well, no, because it would be visible, and, and people would see it on Thunder Oh, Mountain. Disney doesn't care now. They just have That's big true. open warehouses because it costs too much to paint them, I guess. I don't I know. Know. <laughs> so anyway, they announced this today. They, or they put this out today that, oh, oh, these people who were at a meeting last week suddenly can talk now yes. about the fact they may be putting permits yeah. out. Yep. But they couldn't talk about it this whole week since they saw it. But today they get the green light to mention it. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a little weird. Probably tied to their dropping uh, stock price. I'm just which... saying, it's, it's weird. And then they suddenly start announcing, oh, look, here's Tiana's Bayou's animatronics and all that crap. Get excited about that because it's, their stock's going down. It's interesting that they're showing that, though, because a, a lot of people had concerns about Tiana's uh, using screens, lots yeah, of screens. Yeah, I say screens. So... The fact that they're showing animatronics and they're they're good animatronics, I'm also but like they well, do look really good. They do, but I'm also like I hope they're waterproof. And I'm I, sure they are. I right? I mean Splash Mountain already goes down all the time, and those things look pretty advanced. And the more advanced the animatronics, the more often the ride goes down. I'm sure they are because they had animatronics in the old Splash Mountain, and they had animatronics they, they are similar to this one in in the the Frozen ride, and there's water in there. So I, I, yeah. I think it'll be fine. But yeah, they look pretty good. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll show a little clip here. I mean, Mama Odie especially. If you go back show. up to the other one above you, um, they show more about it. Like they, they, they're talking about um, the bird and how he liked the bird. He bought it. And then they talk about how it led to animatronics. Now they're going to show it here in a second. They're going to show several there. Yeah, they have Louis, the uh, Louis Alligator, Mama Odie. They, they look Charlotte, good. Charlotte, Tiana. Is that their, Ralph, their Prince kid? Prince Ralphie. No, that's Prince Ralphie. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it looks, it looks good. I, I mean, I'll give them that, uh, if they're going to do this, I mean, that's the thing, like because Splash Mountain is so beloved because there was so much controversy, like you are going to have to knock this one out of the damn park mm -hmm. because they're going to, if, if they did a budget cut version of, of this reskin, people need to go into this and be like, oh yeah, this is a hundred times better than Splash Mountain. I like Splash <laughs> Mountain, but this is good way better. luck. Yeah, good luck think, with that. I mean, I but, think it could be 100 times better, and they'll still be mad about it. Well, that's but, true. But I'm just um, saying it would give them less to complain about. But if they're just like, oh, yeah, here's one animatronic of Tiana and a whole bunch of screens, people are going to be like, what Yeah, the I don't frick? think that's what they're going with, and it better not be. Like, this um, is the end scene, and that's it. You see, know? Splash Mountain was one of our daughters, one of her favorite, favorite rides ever. But she's she's not as upset as other people because uh, she loves Princess and the Frog, and Tiana's her favorite princess. So, Tiana you know, for is her, her favorite princess. For yeah. Her, yeah, how dare she? She's a little white girl. How dare um, she? But she's ginger, so it's basically the same thing. <laughs> um, yeah, they. she just loves Tiana, like adores yeah, Tiana. She does. So that was the first thrilled. movie we took her to. Yes, she, she's yeah. thrilled that, you know, and, and not thrilled, but she's like, she's not it, as upset as she would have been if it had been somebody else and not Tiana. Uh, if it had been like Ray Skywalker's oh uh, God, wet ride, <laughs> Ray Skywalker's super wet ride, it would have been like, no, oh, there'd be, people would line up for that one. <laughs> Not very many. Anyway, let's go back to Bob Iger. Uh, let's go back to Bob Iger, Hollywood reporter, Bob Iger on woke Disney criticism. A lot of people don't even understand what it really Apparently means. Apparently Bob doesn't understand what it means either when you hear what he says. I'm like, you're so full that, of that shit. I just want to. Mm. That's the go-to. Like people have defined woke and wokeism a hundred times over. And everybody's like, you can't even define it. So you can't complain about it. That's how we got ya. And it's like, no, no, well, no. They start off by, oh, we've been in succession process. And the moment I came back, that's why I got a two-year extension. Um... And he's like, you know, it got pushed. It got changed because of the activism battle. Bullshit, Bob. No. Bullshit. You, since November, you were supposed to be working on succession. And they, they didn't even do the proxy war last year. You got a, you got a, a, a new contract for two more years last year, like in summer, I want to say it was. And the proxy battle didn't even come till now. So it wasn't being held up or distracted or whatever other bullshit narrative you want to spin. You just weren't doing much about it. 
Yeah. You really weren't. And it wasn't until you started, people started asking questions. When the activist investors started asking questions and shareholders started asking questions, then suddenly, oh, 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 we've been doing this the whole time, I swear. There there were other articles out there that uh, insiders, exe- executives in Hollywood are like, he might not leave. He might just be like, well, Everybody's I couldn't. Everybody's got a choice. I think at this point, look, if nothing else, this close call might put the fear of Walt into them. That's that's my my hope is that they will at least attempt. Well, that was my hope that they at least attempt to get their their shit together. But uh, we're going to do more videos day showing this right back. We're right back to square one. We are. But he's like, you know, since the moment I came back, it's been a priority, except we never mentioned anything about it. And I got a two more a year extension for two more years. If you were working on succession, there wasn't a need for that then. Yeah. Bullshit. Oh, it's because of the proxy. But no, that wasn't until, you know, 16, 18 months later. Bullshit. Bullshit, Bob. Yeah. Bullshit. Um, then you talk about they want to have a good transition process because it's complicated and basically a right person like last time. Well, the way it sounds is the reason they had a problem last time is because Bob Iger wouldn't let go. Yeah. Don't let go, Bob. <laughs> you gotta let it go. Let it go. Yes, just you know, get off that Titanic door and let it go. Let it go. Let 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 a woman on that door. No, no uh, that's what they're trying to do, and I don't think she's. Qualified. Dana Waldman would be the. She'd be the worst. Of the four, she's like. She's the worst. I would say her and Bergman are about the same. I think of the the, the four, she's no, no. Her um, and Bergman, either one, I don't think are a good idea. Um, I don't even. I mean, honestly, at this point, I don't even know who would be. And I like. I can't think of anybody that's on the same. Like even like. You know, the coming from the creative angle, like even Michael Eisner, I can't think of anybody they have on deck or close to the company. The closest even... one is the the guy from ESPN because he worked with the um like the video games and stuff. Yeah, I think. Oh, they might put him one. in just be like Fortnite, everybody. Well, that's what I'm thinking because that seems like the way they're going. I think yeah. honestly, he has more qualifications, which I said for a while, and there Bellis is saying it too, and I'm like, I've been saying it anyway. Um. They go down here and they're talking about about oh they're distracted they're coming after me. I don't let me get all get distracted but you keep getting distracted because about Elon Musk he's like like I don't want to get distracted but I'm gonna fly around the country to rustle up some votes yeah I, mean, I know right right that's kind of stupid but he he's like they're talking about being woke and this is what he said. The term woke is thrown around rather liberally. No pun intended in that regard. <laughs> I think a lot of people don't even understand what it what it means. He doesn't explain it either. I think the noise is sort of quieted down. I've been preaching this for a long time at the company before I left. <laughs> and since I came back, our number one goal is to entertain. The bottom line is that infusing messaging as sort of a number one priority in our films and TV shows is not what we're up to. They need to be entertaining and where the Disney company can have a positive impact on the world, whether it's, you know, fostering acceptance, understanding of people, all different types. Great. But generally speaking, we need to be an entertainment first company and understanding that, look, we're trying to reach a very, very diverse audience. And on one hand, in order to do that, what you do, what you, what you do, the stories you tell have to really reflect the audience you're trying to reach. Not white people, but the audience, because they're so diverse, really first and foremost, they want to be entertained. And sometimes they can't be turned off by certain things. Not Disney's audience. They're turned off by everything anymore. Mm -hmm. And we just have to be more sensitive to the interests of the broad audience. So basically, we've done fucked up. We we didn't wokeify everything except you did, and you turned your audience away, and now and now you gotta be more sensitive to the interests of the interests of the broad audience, the 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 normies. Uh, yeah, you got you got to appeal to the not just appeal to the broads. No. Yeah, but <laughs> that's what he means by broad audience. Yeah. It's not easy, you know, so that we can't please everyone all the time, right? You can't please the majority most of the time, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> They haven't done that at all. I, I don't understand why audiences are not going to their movies anymore or watching their shows anymore. Because they haven't, they have not done that. They've always focused on entertainment first and agenda second, guys. I, I don't know why their reputation is like the lowest it's been in decades. No, no, our movies yeah. keep failing. Yeah, because totally people, just because of just coincidental. People are uh, look. I mean, it might be a vocal minority, but a lot but of people. No one's going to see it. Though. Nobody's going to see your movies. Nobody's supporting. A lot of people are canceling Disney Plus. People are not supporting Marvel. They're not supporting. You know what I'm saying? 
I, I don't know even know like Inside Out would have been money in the bank, but I don't even know how that's going to do. Well, it depends on how far they want to push it. If they start pushing it the way some people want, it's not going to go well. You you keep pushing these. And it's like not even about representation because when you're doing representation, you're not even representing you know somebody new. You're just race swapping, gender swapping characters. You aren't yep. even giving them new characters. It's ridiculous. You keep inserting agenda, and then you well it didn't help like for Star Wars, for example, that your own people were going out there attacking the fan base. You have done nothing but there's a picture of Luke Skywalker with a big red X on his face, but it's completely coincidental, guys. Force is female, completely coincidental. Bullshit. The noise is quieted down. Noise, it has not quieted down. It's that's it's, the point. That's why you almost got your ass kicked. You had to put all the stops to not. You got your ass kicked in Florida. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like, I, look, I don't know what to tell you. The reason Nelson Peltz and the reason so many people were cheering him on, the reason he even got a foothold, a toehold in support was because you guys dropped the ball. And it's not right. just because you run out of ideas or, you know, oh, the economy and blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, you guys have pivoted hard left. You're saying you want to make content for everybody. And look, I understand not everything that's produced is for every person, but you're taking things that did have general appeal, franchises that had general appeal, and you're injecting current year politics into yeah. existing franchises. Not even about like, I can't really say anything about strange, like something like strange world. I don't really give a shit. A lot of people don't give a shit, but whatever. That's something new. But when you take again, you know, star Wars, Luke Skywalker, run him into the ground just to, to get the message across. You let your, whether it's his decision or his underlings decision, it's still at the end of the day, he's the captain of the ship. And, and he made the judgment calls that led them to hit the iceberg. Yeah, and, and it's just like your movies I, are doing worse and worse because people are like, they're just turned off because they already know what they're going to get. When you hear Disney, you don't even think like, oh, it's, okay, it's for everybody. You hear yeah. Disney, oh, it's going to be agenda shit. And that's just basically what we've come to. I mean, we're going to do another video here in a bit about how, oh, after this, oh, guess what? Silver Surfer is going to be a woman now. I know, right? I mean, and then, you know. And then they're already trying to rewrite history on that one, too. Yeah, I mean, we're going to do a video on that. Like, you're. Like, oh, look, Tiana's by adventure because it's racist for the other yeah. one, even though a lot of black people were like, it wasn't racist. You know, it wasn't. But you wanted to shove this in there. And then the woman who's like working on this is the one who was behind the idea of let's turn the um, natives in the jungle cruise into chimpanzees. Yeah, I didn't know that was the same person. Yeah, no, she was one of the ones involved. And the thing is, they're going to turn into chimpanzees. Um, and then they're going to make Trader Sam like be, you know, fencing, you know, lost merchandise. Uh, through his, you know, his shop instead of lost and found, and and then if that's not bad enough, you had to make sure the uh, the, the chimp animatronic chimpanzees were represented authentically. I'm like, people think <laughs> don't you're want full their of feel shit. don't want their feelings to be hurt. The animatronic yeah, chimpanzees. And you know what gets me? Disney had had done diversity for years, and no one batted an eye. No, Lilo and Stitch, Pocahontas. I mean, there's so many different ones, and nobody batted an eye because it was done better. Then it's being done now. Representation was so much better. And you guys just, you know, even Princess and the Frog, no one thought anything of it. Like, okay, you guys have just, just pushed so hard on this agenda bullshit that people just immediately get turned off now. You know, whenever you hear Bob Iger or Disney. Yeah, and when we talk about Disney, we really want people to get turned on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, too, like, you know, the live action remakes didn't help. Like, there was no reason to race swap Ariel. I mean, there's been no reason for it. And there was, and there was especially when there was a character from the Little Mermaid show that was its own character they could have gone with. Oh, that's like the, uh, well, the Little Mermaid cartoon that they're doing for Disney Junior. Oh, my God. It's so, um, it's so, well, actually, the only thing that really stuck out to me was that Ursula is her aunt, but. At some point, she's going to run her through with a boat. And Ursula must have got some kind of weird skin condition from the time of the cartoon to the movies because she 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 turned purple. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. That's going to be hard. Isn't that going to be hard to explain to kids? Like, oh, Auntie Ursula. Yeah, we're just going to run you I'm gonna through. I'm going to kill you someday. I'm going to kill you someday. Um, it's just, you know, I'm tired of it. They keep doing like Acolyte. I mean, all this crap. It's just, yeah. it's just one... Bullshit after another, and then they're and you know they keep pushing Ms. Marvel, and they won't and it won't it won't take, and they just keeps trying to push it and push it and push it. They were gonna race swap or gender swap basically all the Marvel characters, and yeah. they're doing they're walking that back now because it wasn't working. But bullshit that you weren't putting a woke agenda. I'm sorry for swearing. My mom's gonna jump me for this, and I'm sorry, mom. 
But I'm so mad about this. You guys have been doing nothing but pushing agenda over story. And that doesn't mean, and, and, and again, people keep equating that. You, you're saying, oh, you can't have diverse people in, in, in shows and movies. No, not what I'm saying at all. Nope. When we were growing up, it was often diverse and nobody cared. You have to put characterization first, entertainment first. And they might just happen to be this or that representation. But Disney has not been doing that. Contrary to what Dickless here says. That's Who's... Iger, not Neon. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't tell them that. That's a secret. I wasn't ready. I wasn't talking about you anyway. Okay. Mickey? Mickey? No. Yeah, Mickey. Mickey's Dickless. Yeah. Um, go ahead what you were going to talk about with the one article. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's, it's interesting that they're trying to put this spin on this uh, to say that, you know, people are – People are over the politics and, you know, woke is being overused because most of the shareholder calls mm -hmm. during the meeting were about politics. I've never seen anything like this. Well, they were the ones that they had people put, put propositions forward. They didn't let shareholders ask questions. Like no. the questions seem to be pre-recorded because last year people called him out and that's when he promised $17 billion to Florida. And that, that dug the hole deeper. We, we are, we are Florida. Florida owes us. And people were pissed. So now instead of letting him talk, they are pre-recorded questions. I was surprised they answered a couple of them, they, honestly. They were very curt. I, I kind of wondered, did they pick them? Did they pick them to be like, oh, look at the look at the look at the alt-right trying to take us down? We're just gonna answer them with grace and poise and and just ignore them and and go about our business. Um but it was interesting because, look, in the past, historically, at Disney shareholder meetings, the questions that are asked are usually like, yeah, and they did have questions like, hey, why are the parks in disarray? You know, that that was a question that came up. And that's usually one that comes up. Um, you know, people have had concerns about the live action remakes. They've had concerns about the quality. I guess before the concerns, the grievances that the shareholders had historically were about the quality or declining quality of the product or questions about like, Hey, are we going to get a big announcement? Are we going to, you know, what's going on here? Um, or, you know, any other issues, big issues that were not really political issues. Most of the questions this time around were about politics. So mm -hmm. if, if, in some every, way, yes. yeah, if everybody's over it and it doesn't matter and the vast majority of people don't care I do not think that would have been the case. No. Um, one shareholder asked, is it possible for Disney to stay out of political and social agendas and just provide entertainment? Well, they, according to Iger, they already are. I'm like, no, they aren't. That's why your movies and shows are declining. That's exactly it. Uh, they're talking about the one, I think it was uh, Chloe Cole. I didn't realize that was her, but she's... Uh, She's from a group called Do No Harm, and she was talking about detransitioning. Yeah, because Disney care. will pay for apparently pay for transitioning care for employees and their kids or whatever, but they won't pay to have it reversed. And those those were just, um, you know, just just a couple of the comments. Of course, you know they're going back, and uh, you know pointing out that Elon Musk has taken shots famously at Disney. Uh, he told them to get fucked. And we uh, told Bob Iger specifically, specifically to get. Yeah. Now it's interesting though. It is very interesting that uh, I thought Disney was going to pull away from X because they don't want to be associated with, uh, you know, the bigots over there, but they have, um, they are certified over there I've seen ads running over there. They're constantly mm -hmm. tweeting. They didn't stop tweeting. They're constantly tweeting, promoting their stuff. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you that they're paying to boost those tweets. So I think they are paying Elon Musk. Well, I'm sure they continue to pay to, to do the stuff they were doing before, that they've been doing for years, where they pay to have, you know, artificial boosting and third-party, you know, accounts boost their stuff. They've done it for years. Yeah, so I just think it's funny. <laughs> I love this. This is, this is just like the media is trying to run with the story, too. They're, they're calling it a win-win in Florida. It's like you didn't win shit in Florida. The only thing you did was settle so you didn't have to drag it out in court so you could build new stuff. And back to that Washington one that kind of ties to this with the win-win is this narrative he's trying to spin. He's trying to spin now like, oh, I was def I was focused on defending the company, not myself. Except they kept running, Iger included, with this narrative that Peltz and Rizzullo wanted to remove Bob Iger. Yeah. You know, they knew that wasn't what was going on. And they kept pushing it because they knew the shareholders that were clueless and didn't bother to look into things and just listen to Disney would not look and just see, oh, they're going to replace Iger. I don't want that. Yep, that's exactly and that, what they And they ran yep. with it. And he... 
he deliberately misled people in that regard. I mean, at least that's how it came across. He was, and why was it him that was going around trying to get people to vote for the board? Why wasn't it the board members who were up for a re-election or the ones that were, you know, in danger? Why weren't they the ones flying around and campaigning? No, it was Iger. Yeah. It had to be him. And it was like all these outlets. Oh, Iger's going to be removed. And they kept saying, that's not what we're saying. And if you look, no. you can find out that's, that's not what they were saying at all. But they kept running with this narrative. Just like it's a win-win in Florida. It's like you got your asses kicked, okay? You lost. You didn't get Reedy Creek back. Nothing got reversed. You had your, your underhanded double dealing bullshit is getting uh, erased. And now you can finally move forward for the, the Walt well, Disney World Park information and stuff that you're starting to do, put permits out and everything else. That's so now you have a board you can work with. But you did it to your own damn self. You started this lawsuit. You did the underhanded crap. You thought you were so, so smart, which would have been under Iger. Thought you were so clever. And it put you back a whole year to bit you in the ass. All right, we're going to end with that? Mm-hmm. With him, him getting his ass eaten? Bye. Pretty much. All right. Boy, this was... <laughs> it might be dickless, but you can still get your ass eaten. Are we going <laughs> to wrap this up then? That's right. Okay. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. Bye.